everybody, and welcome to Mike Nurichlo Online, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. So today's episode, I'm super stoked to introduce to you today Ezra Sipes, the general manager and kind of family guy of Summer Hill Winery. Ezra, thanks so much for coming by the garage. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Mike. Such Thank a pleasure you. to have you. So, son of Stephen Sipes, I guess right. we can call you the general manager at yeah. Summer Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So Summer Hill Winery, you guys are kind of, and neglected to say this by a lot of people, but one of the pioneers of kind of the BC wine world, one of the big Absolutely. few wineries that kind of got BC on the map. Yeah, our, our first vintage was 1991, which was yeah. basically the same time that the modern industry was starting. And at the time we were, I don't know if we were the most, but I think we were pretty much the most expensive wine on the shelf at the time and mm -hmm. really pushing the boundaries of quality and price and mm -hmm. all of those things. And uh, yeah, one of the wineries that definitely brought the BC wine industry into its modern, what you see today. Yeah, what we see today. Fabulous wine. Oh, and BC is just value. exploding. It's so neat to be, to even be a small part of it. Just to, And for you guys, very exciting to be right in it, to watch it grow and develop and become who it's going to be now. Yeah, it's been a, it's been quite a rise. It's 20 years, it's been quite a ride. Yeah, super cool. Now, Summerhill's obviously a, a family business, but somehow you had to get into wine along the way. What got you into wine? What was kind of your aha moment? Mm, you know, uh, you know, I was raised in one of those houses where we were all drinking small amounts of wine yeah. through our childhood. Yeah. You know? I think the first time I had wine, I was eight days old. <laughs> there you go. My bris. Yeah. It was Manischewitz. <laughs> and, um, you know, every Friday night, we'd all have our, you know, our say the Baruch, the Baruch or whatever it's called it, and drink our little glass of wine and yeah and uh, so it's you know it's always been in in, uh, in my life since childhood yeah. so wine for you is just more or less it's it's like eating it's like food it's a way of life it's it's just yeah, part, of, it is. part of a meal right it, that's what and it, is. it shouldn't really be any different yeah wine is meant to be enjoyed that's put right. it that way yeah. awesome so Summer Hill Winery um, you guys are one of the first organic wineries in BC um, tell us more about that. You, that. That's been your push kind of all along, is the organic side of wine. It has been <laughs> in fits and starts, uh, but consistently as far as our practices are concerned, in fits and starts as far as our marketing is concerned, we've been organic since uh, since my family bought the vineyard in 87. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not something we've always marketed because organic wine has had uh, a rough reputation. A lot of that is because of the sulfide restrictions in the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. So they make, uh, in America, too often you have a organic wine that turns brown in the glass because of the sulfide restrictions. Oh. And in, in Canada, we have uh, sulfide restrictions as well, but they're a little bit looser. Okay. We're allowed to add sulfites to preserve our wines, uh, but just in, there's a threshold, which mm -hmm. is lower than, than what, how conventional wineries operate. And uh, so that allows us to not only make organic wine, but also to make good wine. Good wine. That's going to last. That's going to stick around for a while. Right. Well, I think something that the general drink, drinking <coughs> public or wine consuming public needs to understand is that sulfites in general are not a bad thing. Um, they, in used, well, used in moderation anyway. If they're over the top, yeah, they're no good. Well, if they're over the top, you can taste them. Yeah, exactly. And that's a flaw, absolutely. Yeah. But you know, you, you actually get more sulfites eating at a salad bar mm -hmm. or eating dried fruit yeah. than you do from drinking even a conventional bottle of wine. Yeah. And they're totally omnipresent in our society and in mm -hmm. the food we eat. And so it's a, it's a total misconception when people think they're allergic to sulfites because they react specifically to wine. Yeah. It's probably something else in the wine. Yeah. And there's, there's all sorts of different things going on in wine that can, that can cause that. That's right. Anyway, um, the other thing, organics and a pyramid. A pyramid. Uh, you guys are probably the only ones who sell and age your wines in a pyramid that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. What is significant about the pyramid? What makes it so special and what made you guys go that way for your, your cellar and where you mm, age your wines? Yeah. Well, you know, my dad is a visionary guy and mm -hmm. he's a very artistic guy and he has a lot to express. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that he, you know, and if he gives you the, the pyramid tour, you understand it. For me to try and communicate it in words, you know, to people watching yeah. a web TV, it's difficult. It's something you have to go and experience to really understand it. Um, but it's a it's a rich experience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're making organic wine, you're partnering with nature and you're expressing something that's totally uh, harmonious and natural and beautiful. And uh, you know, nature has all of this sort of esoteric mystery, mm -hmm. and a lot of that is is symbolized in the pyramid. It mm. has all these natural ratios that occur in nature and, and so it's kind of a 
you know, a symbolic temple of nature, and it's part of that philosophy of okay. almost, you know, uh, bowing down and saying, like, we can't improve on this. No, let nature do its That's own right. thing. That's right. There's yeah. nothing we can do. All we can do is get out of the way and, and appreciate, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's the whole kind of dynamic, and this I always find very interesting in winemaking, and I think it's great, and I embrace it very much, is allowing nature to work together with itself and in itself, um, kind of the direction you guys are going with biodynamics now. Mm -hmm. um, and biodynamic wine growing or farming is a whole other um, theory or practice, whatever you want to call it, where you're allowing all the parts of nature to really work together to, to, for it to make the wine, not really to have you make it, or the grapes anyway. Yeah, well said, yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's it's, a very interesting practice. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great. I mean, because it's, you know, organics uh, in itself, uh, like uh, the sort of baseline of what organics is, it means you're not using synthetics. Mm -hmm. Basically what it means. It's free synthetics. And biodynamics, I think, is more in line with the original intent of the sort of organic movement, uh, which is seeing the farm as an ecosystem, yeah. making sure all of its parts are healthy, the soil is alive mm -hmm. and vibrant, and, uh, you know, we have nature preserves on our property and mm -hmm. biodiversity and all those things, and it's all... Well, it's everything working together. It's the different organic plant or plants working together. Call them weeds or whatever you want to call them. Right. Or grass, yeah. um, insects um, that help control other insects, um, animals that help control the ins everything in nature working together. It's 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 like you said. It's a beautiful thing. It's really neat. Very interesting. And when you make it happen, it's really neat to see. Um, anyway, we can talk only so much about wine for so long. Let's taste some of your wine. Now, these two wines you brought for me today, they just won some significant warm awards down in L.A. Did they not? Uh, yeah, they did. I brought these two especially because they're brand new releases for us after yeah. a year aging in the bottle. And they both won uh, Best in Class Gold Medals at the Los Angeles International Wine and Spirit Competition. Oh, well, good for you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, That's awesome. Much. And this is new packaging as well. You've gone to a little bit simpler label um, with the, mm -hmm. logo of the logo of the pyramid. Um, nice, bright, vibrant, clean white label. You guys can have a look there. Yeah. Yeah, these will be around for a year and then it's going to shift again. These are kind of transitional labels for us. Okay. So our brand is sort of yeah. evolving always. Hopefully it's finding its plateau so yeah. it can live for a little while. Yeah. Now if somebody's interested in this Gewurz, um, what are they looking at for a bottle of this? How much is it? This is uh, $20. $20. Very reasonable price. And Gewurz, one of those varieties that tends to do very well in the Okanagan. Mm -hmm. Now this is one of those extremely lychee forward, very floral, um, a lot of rose petal. Mm -hmm. It's got a really interesting minerality coming through on the nose, too. Got a little bit of baking spice in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's, a, it's a rich Gewurz, too, hey? It it's is. It's palate yeah. filling. It's, That's it's, right. It's got a bit of oily, yeah. oily fat texture. Yeah, it reminds me of, uh, to a degree, of a very ripened Viognier, ever so slightly. Mm. You get that nice, oily, mouth-filling texture to it. Um, yeah, and good kind of herbal finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah nice some, I want to tell you something else that's, uh, I don't know how unique it is to us, but it, mm -hmm. it's kind of a best practice thing, at least as far as I'm concerned. All of the, uh, it's a balanced convert, it um, mm -hmm. has a little bit of uh, residual mm -hmm. sweetness in it. I was going to say there's a hint of that in there. And all of the sugar in our white wine is unfermented grape sugar. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's part of the sort natural of natural sugar. organic thing, mm -hmm. is it's a cold stabilized stop fermentation. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you guys are stopping the fermentation partway through before it completely goes dry, is that? That's right, that's, that's right. As opposed to adding, adding Roger's magic to it, or? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, it's a nice Gewurz for 20 bucks. I would drink bottles of this. This is really good. I enjoy it. This would do very well with your Asian food, your Thai foods, your mm -hmm. Chinese food, um, or just on its own with a nice piece of cheese and some good people. Yeah, we're drinking it warm, so mm -hmm. it's kind of, we're drinking it in its naked state. It's naked stage, but... It's displaying very nicely. The alcohol is not too high. There's nothing coming through that's astringent or nothing that's in my face that's bothering me. It's even at room temperature. It's it's displaying very nicely. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I enjoy it. And what else have you got for us? This is your Cab Franc. Now, Cab <coughs> Franc. I'm always excited about Cab Franc because Cab Franc is one of those grapes that, in the Okanagan, tends to just tends to rock it. Give us a rinse there. Um, it's just. It's, and I find it very neat, very interesting, because there's very few parts of the world that do Cab Franc well, other than British Columbia. Right? Mm -hmm. You've got the Loire Valley. Um, yeah. Their Cab Franc is fun, it's interesting, it's, it's thin and juicy. That's right. Um, but it's, it's not what we can create here. You go down to Napa Valley, Napa Valley they have their Cab Sav. But Cab Sav, um, 
it works really well for them, but Cab Franc does not work well for them. Up here, our Cab Franc just it's it really rocks. Good. It gets yeah. really ripe yeah. every year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, delicious and full body. I mean, I think I think the growers here have learned how to work with it mm -hmm. over the years. So we we're not getting the sort of vegetal kind of green pepper. In the past, yeah, you've got some of flavors that, that grab. I mean, you, you know, and and not that those are bad. I mean, I love. Loire Cap Franc, first oh, when you can get those flavors in there, mm -hmm. and it's very enjoyable. Yeah. But I, you know, we're in the new world here, and people want a nice, ripe, nice red ripe wine, wine. So yeah. we've learned how to kind of bring the crop levels down and yeah. make sure we ripen the crop. Well, and the neat thing about Cap Franc, even ripe though, like you're saying, you still get hints, subtle hints of those herbaceous characters, those kind mm -hmm. of green bell peppers, like, but subtly they're not because sometimes it can be in your face. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, same story. You get so much, just bright red and black fruits. Um, it's a juicy <laughs> wine. A lot of really neat kind of coffee, chocolate, mm -hmm. um, tobacco notes on it. Mm. Now this is That's a, a delicious this is one. This 2007 mm -hmm. and it was just released. Just released. It was released after three years in barrel mm -hmm. and one year in bottle. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, it would have been uh, economically better to release it. Of course. But it would not have been right for the wine. No. And, and Cap Franc is one of those grapes where, for us, because being organic, there's a lot of things we're not allowed to add to the wine or to mm -hmm. do to the wine. Our number one best ingredient is thyme, mm. you know, because it just, it was so tight right out of the gate. And the thyme in the barrel and then the thyme in the bottle, that's what allows it to soften, take yeah. those edges off it, starts to open up. It was such a tight structured wine that was not ready to release before. There's really nothing tight about this wine right now. It's still got great tannin, great structure to it, um, and it'll keep going for quite a long time, but it will. Um, it's definitely got a nice, soft, and silky mouthfeel to it. Um, it's very rich and full-bodied. I'll definitely give it that. Yeah, well, that's, that's the magic of time, you know? Yeah, and what's the old program you're using on this one? <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, generally at Summer Hill, we're, we're not uh, big oak fanatics. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the right wine, in the right you know, uh, amounts, you know, we use it and we, we buy a few new barrels every year, but generally we, we use neutral barrels. Mm -hmm. All of our red wines are, uh, go into barrel, mm -hmm. uh, but generally they're neutral and it's for okay. that natural micro oxygen mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and to soften. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one, you can probably pick up some oak. Notes. Yeah. The oak definitely comes through, but not, not in your face or anything. It's just, it's just an extra kind of bit of its personality, I'll put it that way. There's there's so much fruit character, almost yeah tobacco leaf meets a little bit of kind of that ash. It's almost a bit meaty. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. of interesting things going on in this wine. Um, it's got a lot of character to it, and there's just you know, off in the background there's those subtle kind of vanilla bean aromas to it and things like that. Uh, a little bit of cocoa vanilla bean uh, from the oak. I like it. Now what's a bottle of this one going for? This is uh twenty eight ninety five. Twenty eight ninety five. That's right. That's a very reasonable price for oh seven. I I like that. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's not cheap uh, barrel aging for that long because mm -mm. you, you get a back. That's something else well, in the barrel. Well, it's you get concentration, right? Because mm -hmm. you get an evaporation. Yeah. Well, that's something <laughs> I don't think people realize. When you're making, say you've got 30 barrels of this or whatever, right? Um, people don't realize that annually you tend to lose up to 5% of the wine. Um, they call it what? The angel's share, right? That's right. Um, that's just, exactly right. It evaporates up the sides of the barrel, but a barrel is porous, and that mm -hmm. has to do with the micro-oxygenase and letting mm. oxygen in in a very light, stable amount so it helps the wine to evolve, more or less. Yep. Evolve, concentrate, yeah. soften. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's totally time's best ingredient. Yeah, you brought a couple. I can understand why you won a couple of awards off these wines. Yeah, thank I you. think you've done a very nice job of them. And what's the name of your winemaker? Uh, Eric. Eric, Eric yeah. 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 yeah, I've met him in the past. Uh, he's, a, he's definitely a real talent. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, Trained in um, Germany, went okay. to Germany when he was a young man, and mm -hmm. did an apprenticeship on the Mosul, mm -hmm. and then he worked at the Geisenheim, I think, okay. university. He was on the tasting panel there for years and stuff yeah. like that. He's always been an enjoyable person to hang out with at different events, and he's always got a lot of interesting things to say. And... All right, now this is something very interesting for you guys. We're at organic winery, semi-biodynamic. Who would have guessed you would have started putting wine in a box? Right, yeah. Tell me about that. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, look, we, this is something we just released we boxed, wow. and I thought it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. I totally thought it would be embraced right away and everybody would get it because yeah. it's basically what we're doing is we're not making necessarily 
boxed wine. We're making our organic Okanagan Valley fine wine, and yeah. we're putting it in a box. It in a box. So it's not like we're we're mi- we're suddenly becoming a bulk winery. Yeah. Although it's, I think people have a trouble getting around their heads around it because uh, we're selling our the same bottles of organic Merlot, for instance, is thirty dollars a bottle. Yeah. We're, we put a little in the box, we're selling it for $80 a box, mm. which is a great deal. It's yeah. the equivalent of $20 a bottle. Yeah, so it's still more but, cost effective. But it's twice as much as the most expensive box on the market. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's kind of this weird disconnect that I'm finding, I'm running into now that we've released it, because people who are used to buying boxed wines are not used to spending money, and yeah. people who are used to spending money are not used to buying boxed wines. Yeah. But there's amazing benefits to the package. Mm-hmm. So I hope, I, I want to do a big marketing push and sort of start educating people. You know, when the screw cap mm-hmm. first came out, it also had a huge amount of stigma. prejudice, yeah. a huge yeah. amount of stigma. Mm-hmm. But there's, I'll just, I'm going to tell you about the benefits of cask wine, bag in box <laughs> right now. And I'll also tell you about the drawbacks and be totally honest with you and straightforward. Uh, the benefits from an environmental standpoint, there was one study from the States uh, I, if, I hope I get these statistics right. I'll, I'll round down just to make sure I'm within the, the ballpark. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a... So we were just rudely interrupted right there by my garage door behind camera opening by my lovely wife just kind of wondering what's going on. There's another guest waiting outside. But anyway, carry on, Ezra, about the bag in a box. Okay, yes, benefits of the bag in the box, once again, from the top. Uh, uh, landfill waste is reduced uh, uh, by 90 plus percent, and carbon footprint uh, reduced by 70 plus percent. Wow. I might have those two backwards, I'm not sure, but that's a study Still from the tall States. numbers. They're yeah. both big numbers, so there's a definite environmental impact. The other benefit of the bag in the box format is that it's, it, there's a bag in here, right? A little silver bag, you can, I don't know if you can see it from there. And it's uh, vacuum sealed, so when the wine comes out, the bag collapses in on itself, and no o- oxygen gets in. Yeah. And therefore, uh, it stays fresh. So you can, if you're somebody who likes to have a glass of wine a night, and doesn't necessarily want to leave an open bottle in your fridge for yeah. four nights, mm-hmm. because by Box the end of it, it's yeah. not going to be the same wine it was, this is a wonderful format for you. Uh, especially in, now if you're somebody who has never gone to this format before because you think, oh, well, I can't get a good wine in that format, yeah. this is for you. Uh, but the main reason that we, we launched it was actually for restaurants. It was, oh, a, that's a, brilliant it was idea. a restaurant, yeah. uh, the Sydney Pier in Victoria, mm-hmm. who asked us to do it because they have all sorts of environmental stuff going on. They've got geothermal and they mm-hmm. have a number of initiatives to cut down the okay. yeah. So they asked us for it. Oh. And we said, it's brilliant, mm-hmm. we love it, we're in, we bought a little machine, mm-hmm. and we printed up some boxes and we're full bore into it. Hmm. Yeah, and we're doing a number of wines in it. Uh, this one is a, a new product that we're just doing in box, we're not doing it in bottle. Um, we wanted to make uh, into like an entry level red and white blend mm-hmm. that's certified organic. Yeah. Um, and so because of the environmental impacts, we thought it would be a good idea just to launch this just in the box as mm-hmm. like a special. Type. Okay. So this is a different blend for you guys. What's the blend in here? This is <clears throat> this is the 2008 Alive or <laughs> excuse me. No problem. 2008 Alive Organic Red. And this one happens to be Foch and Merlot. Mm. Now Foch is another variety that I've had from you guys in the past, mm-hmm. plenty of different vintages, and it's always been super interesting. And Foch is one of those varieties <coughs> we've talked about on the show before, but it's kind of one of the original varieties of Canada. I mean, originally planted yeah, here. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. It was planted here because it's a, it's a hybrid, it's one of those grapes that was developed, I think it was developed in France after mm-hmm. the phylloxera, they're trying to find something that would work there with phylloxera. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the ones that survived because it does have a lot of good qualities to it, mm-hmm. kind of very, interesting flavor mm-hmm. and it's frost tolerant it yields well growers like it so it was planted here in canada before people realized we could be growing yeah they assumed out. canada oh dog sleds in england that's right it's cold it's, here you can't yeah, everything's gonna die everything's gonna die that's right so, and foch survives pretty much anything it's a really hard grape so grow. most of the foch was pulled out mm-hmm. during the, the initiative to pull out the, the hybrids and replant vinifera mm-hmm. but it's sort of one of those ones that's backed by popular demand because yeah. it does make a good wine quail skate does a wonderful foch yeah we our, our the way we built our our portfolio is uh, if somebody if a grower says okay I'm going to convert to organic or I'm an organic grower we say great 
we'll buy your whole vineyard. And that's mm -hmm. always been our vision is let's see, how, let's see if we can make the whole valley organic. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, so we make all sorts of weird varietals and weird wines. We have all sorts of small lot stuff because that's how we built our portfolio. Yeah. Our Foch comes from a single vineyard in Oliver called Park Hills Vineyard. Mm -hmm. The grower's name is Hans Buchler and it's an amazing vineyard. He's total into integrated pest management and biodynamics. He's got, he's seeded under his uh, vineyard with all sorts of leguminous plants that's that are cool. nitrogen fixing and yeah. it's, his soils are, I mean, that's terroir. Yeah. You go on his land and, and I'm gonna have to use that later. So that sounds really cool. Soil. I mean, yeah, it's like, wow. That sounds really cool. So our Foch is always very interesting. Yeah. And it has huge vintage variations because it's, you know, one of those vineyards. It's reflecting the land. It's reflecting the Very terroir. Much. And I've always, I've, what I've learned with Foch is if it's cro cropped properly um, and grown properly, it can make a very lively, very juicy, very fun wine, a, mm -hmm. a very delicious wine and so many different types of wine it can yeah. do as well. And we do a, we do a Foch as well, which is much more expressive of that vineyard. This is a blend. Foch is a, a big part of the blend. But also, there's Merlot in here, and you can taste. I mean, it, you can taste. It, it doesn't taste yeah. like Foch. No, it definitely doesn't taste like Foch. It's there. You get the Foch characteristics. There's almost the purple fruit coming through, things like that. But there's a lot of Merlot on the on the front of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of those big cherries, a little bit yeah, of that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Merlot again, probably the. Uh, is it not the most planted grape in the Okanagan? Oh, I believe it is. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's Merlot what I've heard. And, and it, Merlot and Pinot Green. Yeah, yeah, and it grows so well there. It does well in our climate. So. It does. It has structure. Yeah. And everything. It's not... I mean, that scene from Sideways ruined, <laughs> ruined the Merlot. Merlot industry. Yeah. I wish... I mean, it was a great scene. I know they... I don't know if they knew what an effect it would have, but... Yeah. I mean, if they had said, like, California Merlot rather than just a blanket statement. It's all Merlot. Because, you know, yeah. it does tend to be soft uh, mm -hmm. in a climate like California which has its own qualities that yeah. you may like, you may dislike, but it is what it is. I like it personally. I like a soft Merlot. Yeah. But here in the Okanagan, we tend, we can achieve a more structured Merlot with a real good tannic backbone. Absolutely. Something that can age. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, some of the problems here, we'll prejudge it here in the Okanagan, the general public will, because they are making a structured Merlot. They can do that. It will age well. Um, and give it time. It's going to soften and make a beautiful product. I've had a lot of Merlot forward Meritage blends and Merlots in the Okanagan that with time have become beautiful yeah. wines. I, I said I, I said I was going to also give the, the downside of the okay. just full disclosure. The one thing that the uh, bottle will always have over the bag and box format is this is not a format for aging wines. Mm -hmm. This is meant to be a fresh product. Uh, uh, it, it has a shelf life. I don't know. We're experimenting with it. It's new for us. Uh, we're thinking that a re in a red wine, about a year after we package it, yeah. it's going to not be good to go anymore and white wine maybe a little less than that yeah uh, once you open it you have six weeks to drink it before it starts turning well, six weeks is awesome but it's basically it's a it's a fresh product so this is uh, we, we didn't talk about that much but it's a soft it, yeah wine. exactly well, it's if, ready to drink if someone were to pour this for me i would not assume it's a bag in a box wine because bag in a box wines are often the stigma is it's a cheap wine and that's, that's what right. they're typically doing this is not a a cheap wine. It's it is decent quality wine. It's a very nice wine. It's very approachable. Very yeah, juicy, it's a, drinkable. It's really it's a it's you know it's yeah. meant to be our sort of like house pour table red wine. Exactly. Well, we're going for with that live. This series. would be I would be ecstatic to have this as a house wine at a restaurant. If I saw this on a menu, I'd be like I am having that because it's a very because often wine, well, restaurants will carry very cheap wine as their house wine um, mm -hmm. because they have to open a whole bottle, <laughs> it's not worth it. When they've got this, it lasts, it's open, and you're gonna have good quality wine to go with your meal. Yeah, so we're just, uh, you're one of the first people to taste, actually I think you're the first person outside the winery to taste it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Awesome, well, very best of luck to, with that, Ezra. That's a super interesting new venture, and I hope that it is embraced for you guys. It's displaying really well in my glass. I really like yeah, it. Thank you, Mike. Um, you guys are located in Kelowna. That's right, yeah. Right in the heart of wine country in Kelowna, very close to, um, Cedar Creek, Christian <coughs> Hill, all those guys, you're That's right in the same right. area. Um, if people want to come by, I'm sure you guys have a great tour. Um, we are, yeah, we're, we're really our destination winery. We've got a great tour, we've got a big tasting room, and we've also got a um, restaurant where we serve 100% uh, organic food. That's our theme, you know, mm -hmm. and we're committed to it. And in my own life, I like to eat organic. I like to feed my daughter organic food. Yeah. So we like to feed all our guests organic food. So soup to nuts from the meats to the oils. And the vegetables we grow right on site, uh, everything's 100% organic. Awesome. And we've got a beautiful view. And 
There we go. And if you want to learn more about, yeah, go visit them. Um, it's a worthwhile visit. You'll like look for the giant champagne glass being poured out, out, That's right. out in the front. It's a fountain or something. Um, do you have a website as well? Yeah, it's www.summerhill.bc.ca. Perfect. I'll have the link below the video for you so you guys can click on that, learn more about Summerhill. They're a constantly changing winery, constantly um, doing all kinds of new things. Super excited to see what you guys are making. Really delicious wines. Ezra, thank you so much for coming by today. Thank you, Mike. Cheers. Cheers. Appreciate your time. And everybody out there, thank you so much for watching today. And don't forget, wine, depretentiousized, even in a box. <laughs> we'll see you on the next episode.